On April Fool's Day 2006, five teenage girls left a number of cardboard Mario question mark blocks around their city. It was supposed to be a public art project to bring joy to the locals, except police mistook it for a bomb threat. So, in this video I'll tell you where those teenagers got the idea from, how police mistook this simple prank for a danger to public safety, and how things turned out for those five, uh, culprits. This is the Mario game that got five people in trouble with the law. In the year 2001, a mysterious man from Ontario, Canada began drawing graffiti around the city where he lived. A couple of years later, in 2003, he adopted the name Poster Child and began making a name for himself, putting up strange, often avant-garde art posters across his hometown. But he became truly famous a couple years later when he launched his Mario Question Marks online project. The aim of the project was this, to teach people online how to create origami Mario question mark blocks out of paper, scissors and tape. Those people would then leave those blocks up around their town as a kind of public art project. They would dangle them from trees, telephone poles and outside buildings. Here's the six step instructions that Poster Child created. Step one, buy some shiny yellow wrapping paper. Step 2. Out of cardboard, cut out some power-ups to put inside the boxes. Step 3. Cut six squares out of cardboard, put the power-ups inside, and tape your squares into a cube shape. Step 4. Cover the box with the yellow wrapping paper, and draw a question mark on each side. Step 5. Attach a piece of string to your box. And Step 6. Hang up the box somewhere around your town. And that is it! With those six steps, visitors to Poster Child's website could create their own Mario blocks and spread this global art project to their own town. And lots of people did it. Poster Child's website features images submitted by people across America and even overseas. However, this is an important warning from me to you, dear viewer. I do not recommend following Poster Child's instructions and hanging these Mario blocks up in public spaces like parks or in city streets. Because if you do, you might get in trouble with the law. And that is exactly what happened to a group of American teenagers in 2006. Let me introduce you to the semi-rural city of Ravenna in Ohio, US. It has a population of just over 11,000 people, and unless you're from the area, you've probably never heard of the place. But in the year 2006, a group of five teenage girls from Ravenna, aged between 16 and 17, stumbled across Poster Child's website. And they thought it was neat. They liked the idea of taking part in this global art project and so decided that, together, they would create a bunch of these cardboard Mario blocks and hang them up across their own city. So, one afternoon, the group created 17 of these homemade Mario blocks, and then, on the night before April Fool's Day 2006, they went out and about Ravenna and placed these blocks around town. They put one outside their high school, others on street signs, outside the local church, or on trees. and. Once all 17 blocks were put up around town, each of the five girls returned to their homes and went to sleep. Little did they know what commotion they had just caused. So, 7.15 the next morning, and someone walking past the church on Main Street noticed this strange looking Mario block. They flagged down a police officer who'd been passing by and asked the officer to investigate this suspicious looking object. The officer questioned church employees, but no one had any idea what this strange cardboard box left outside the church was. With no more leads and still suspicious of the odd package, the officer decided to call in the county bomb squad, along with the hazardous materials or hazmat unit. When the hazmat team arrived, they tested for any sign of radiation or chemical warfare agents. They found none. 
While that was going on, the local police department began receiving a steady stream of phone calls reporting mysterious packages that were being found all around the city, each of them shiny and golden, with a question mark on each side. There were packages found at the local library, outside a bakery, even around the courthouse. Local police had never seen anything quite like this. Meanwhile, back at the church, now that the hazmat team was done with the package, it was the bomb squad's turn. They opened the question mark box to see if, indeed, explosive materials were inside. But instead of that, all they found were cardboard cutouts of Mario power-ups. What had started as a simple April Fool's Day prank, a kind of public art project, had ballooned into a major bomb scare. Before this got too out of hand, things needed to be stopped. And that very morning, as the packages were being discovered all around town, a teenage girl and her mother came to visit Police HQ. She confessed. She, along with a handful of friends, were the ones behind these question mark packages that had appeared overnight across the city. It had been a simple prank that had gone too far, she told police. When they heard what this girl had to say, the police weren't happy. They wanted all five of the girls to be prosecuted. This guy here is Randall McCoy. In 2006, he was police chief for Ravenna, Ohio. And he, in particular, hated this Mario Block prank. He said in an interview, The girls found an internet site called Mario Question Blocks, which told you step by step how the game is played, along with instructions on wrapping the packages, just to see what kind of response you get. He further elaborated, the potential is always present when dealing with a suspicious package that it could be deadly. In today's day and age, you just cannot do this kind of stuff. It was Randall McCoy who wanted the pranksters to face serious consequences. Even though he acknowledged that none of them intended any harm, he said there was a strong possibility they could face criminal charges. And when this news was published, people weren't exactly on his side. I was unaware that trying to bring a little happiness and fun to people's days was now considered a terrorist threat. These are the kind of stories that just infuriate me as an American citizen. The Ravenna Police Department should be ashamed of themselves. We must start judging people by their motives. It's sad that someone's attempt to get a chuckle out of people, I would laugh at it, is met with a criminal charge. It's pop culture art. And there's another point. Many, many people pointed out that if this had been an attack, surely the culprits wouldn't want to draw attention to the fact by covering the packages in shiny golden wrapping paper and big question marks. It just doesn't make sense. But none of that mattered to Randall McCoy, chief of police. He had made up his mind, and so he referred the girl's case to the county prosecutor's office. Those five teenagers' fates now lay in the hands of these prosecutors. Luckily, that's where some sense was finally seen by someone in power. The prosecutor in charge was a man called Victor Vigluici. And while Vigluici saw that these boxes had certainly caused chaos and stress to a number of locals, he also recognised that there hadn't been any kind of bad intention behind the incident. As one commenter pointed out, they had been trying to spread joy to the town, it just didn't quite work out as planned. So, Victor Vigluici announced, one week after the incident, that the case was being dropped by prosecutors. The girls were imitating an art project they found on the internet, he said in an interview. None of the girls had any prior contacts with the police or juvenile court and are all good students. I do not believe that they had any bad or malicious intentions, but were not thinking about the consequences of their actions in this day and age. Each of the teenagers wrote letters of apology to the public safety agencies which were called out to investigate these boxes, like the hazmat team for instance. And with that, the incident was finally over. But the mysterious phenomenon of the strange Mario blocks that appeared overnight would not be forgotten in Ravenna for a long time. 
Despite what Ravenna Police Chief Randall McCoy says, the purpose of these boxes is not just to see what kind of response you get. It is to bring a smile to people's faces, to get them to connect with their neighbours, to bring colour into an otherwise grey urban landscape. Oh, but that isn't the only Nintendo-related crime. Back in 2015, $10,000 worth of rare amiibo were stolen from Nintendo. If you want to hear all about it, then check out the video I made on the topic a couple of years back. And I'll see you next time. Bye!